Of course, it's Christian Pulisic who is grabbing all of the headlines. What a great performance. Yes. And we've sat here in the studio and we've talked about Christian Pulisic in every which way possible. And the one thing that has always been in common with Christian Pulisic when we bring him up is that he is a good player. Nobody has ever questioned whether he's a good player or not. What we have questioned is this obsessive paranoia of people saying, you know what, he's not playing because he's American. Right. And there is uh, some sort of agenda against uh, the American Because he wasn't with Dar at Derby with Frank yeah, Lampard. Correct, before, yeah. yes. And, and which, it, it, it's just craziness. It, it really is. And so, as any other player in the world who comes to a new team, and I'll give you an example, Matthias De Ligt. Yep. He was considered to be super duper best ever defender, young, whatever, so on and so forth, coming from Ajax, goes to Juventus, and what did he do the first couple of weeks? He sat on a beautifully uh, leather <laughs> Italian bench that was for him right off the field. That's what he did. Yeah. And he only came on the field because Chiellini gets injured. So if it's good for the league, it, it's also, it also happens for Pulisic. It's not specific to the American player or specific to Pulisic, but to the credit of Christian Pulisic, he gets an opportunity to play, and every time he's got an opportunity to play, or most of the time anyway, he's had an impact. And today he had a tremendous impact. Gets an opportunity, takes advantage of that opportunity, scores the three goals, and now it's a matter of, you know what? This is how I earn my respect within the locker room. This is how I earn the confidence of my manager. This is how I earn the respect of the fans, of the organization. By having this sort of performance, proving it on the field, not off the field, not by contract, not by the money you're getting paid, but by actually doing it on the training field, taking that to the game, and then producing the way he did today. I don't mean to use Twitter as a reference for uh -huh. the questions, but I will do because some were saying, this is why I was saying he should be starting all the matches. Ah, well, of course. Do, do, do these people in Twitter that you are taking these questions from, do they think that Frank Lampard sits back and says, you know what, I really don't want to win this game, <laughs> so I'm going to make choices to give my team the least opportunity to win a match. No, Frank Lampard is trying to put out the team that he thinks gives him and Chelsea the best chance to win. And when he has evaluated the team over the course of the season, he has said, you know what, I like William to play. I like Hudson Odoi to play. I want Pedro to play. In this case, he's also said that Christian Pulisic has been training at a level that deserves a start. So he got a start. Mm -hmm. And to the credit of Christian Pulisic, yeah, nice. he made the most of it. And that's what you do as a professional. You work, you work for the opportunity. Now you get the opportunity, that door is open, and you walk right through that door, and that's what Pulisic has done. And now he has put Frank Lampard in a situation where it's very difficult to put yeah. him back on the bench. And so then whoever was sat on the bench now will have to work in order to get an opportunity to play and try to make the most of the opportunity when he gets that chance. This has nothing to do with where you come from or what your background is. Is it do we like Hershey, Pennsylvania, or we don't? It has nothing to do with that. Which, by the way, I love Hershey, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah? Yes, I do. You is that where they make the chocolates? Yes, they do. I'm not a big fan. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Well, I like the chocolate. Bitter. <laughs> so negative today. But the point, the point being is, you know what? He got a chance to play. He took advantage of it. And now, probably, more than likely, will, con will remain on the field. What about Chelsea, eh? Yeah. Yeah, and, and we had all sorts of reasons to think that maybe Chelsea, because of this youth movement, that it was going to take some time. And while there may have been some early struggles and early questions about Frank Lampard, is he the right man for the job? Yeah. And was he just given the job because he's a Chelsea legend? Is, is his legend status going to drop because he's not going to be successful with Chelsea? And here we are. Yeah. They're playing well. The young players are fun playing to well. Watch. They're fun to watch. They're entertaining, but they're getting results. They're productive. They're dynamic. There's a lot to like about Chelsea. And most of all, you, you, this is a team that was not expected to be doing this well. And a lot of players that were not expecting to be doing this well. And you see him out there and he proves, you know, who are we? We're nobody. All this outside noise doesn't matter as long as the uh, players in that locker room believe in what they're doing. We've talked a lot about VAR in the Premier League in the opening nine matches and the fact that the bar has been set so high that everyone seems reluctant to overturn any sort of decision. Oh! Yeah. This weekend they got excited. Obviously we saw in the highlight the hudson Adoy dive. Was it the right decision to overturn the penalty? See, I don't think it's a penalty, but this is, when you set the standard, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's, as a player you want consistency. So you set the standard that this, this bar by VAR is incredibly high, right? And so when you have to start looking at the replay from all sorts of different angles, then you can formulate an argument in which you can say, well, there's a hand on his back. 
this, the defender is dangling a leg. Maybe there's some contact. Maybe there's some interference. And so are we going back to the conversation of if, if this was given as a penalty, as it was, yeah. and we will go back to last week, would this have been upheld by VAR because it's a clear and obvious? And if you had set that standard, what would concern me is that now you're, you're having the Premier League be reactionary. There's, they, we're being criticized right. because of our very high VAR, that, that bar that, who, who knows what that high bar is, and now we are going to set it too low. And the truth is somewhere in between. I thought you just get the call right. What was interesting in that, and we saw, of course, in the Brighton-Everton game, Michael Keane, the penalty was awarded after not initially being given, was that neither referee went to a monitor. Correct. They were told over an earpiece, we know a monitor is available in the Premier League, no one has gone to look at it yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're afraid of seeing on it. But on both of those occasions, would you agree the best way to go forward was for both of those referees to go and reference a monitor? Yes, and if, if, if nothing else for the perception of actually going and seeing the play yourself, yeah. not, not just be told, because in the uh, Hudson Odoi sequence, for example, the referee doesn't go and see it, and he's told. He's told, and then he gives a yellow card and says, yeah. wait a minute, For you, you saw it as a penalty. Yeah. A minute ago, you saw it as a penalty, and now you're being told it's a yellow card. How about if you're a referee, and I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, well, at least let me see it. Because yeah. you're telling me it's a yellow card, let me see it. Because I'm the one giving out the yellow card. I'm the one with the responsibility. Let me go see it, and then I'll evaluate and make the assessment as such. That's, that's the part that I think there's a disconnect with VAR in the Premier League in that the perception from the outside in is that some guy who's not in the stadium, who's somewhere else, he's making these decisions, he's telling you how to do it, and the referee bears no responsibility. He is the one making the call in the end, so shouldn't he be the one that goes and sees it and looks at it and evaluates it? And, and he's also seen it in real time. Sure. So he's, he's seen the, the whole play leading up to this. He knows the context of the game. Whereas whoever is in rooms in, in a dark room somewhere yeah. doesn't quite have the same access that the head referee who's right there, give him access. What, let him watch the play. What is it going to take? Another 30 seconds? People are going to complain about that. If they don't, if they do, who cares? Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.